Hey everybody, John and here. Hello, 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 and good morning greetings. Today it is January 24th, a very, very special day to myself. Not, nothing to myself, but eh, that's just a kind of an inside joke thing or whatever. Alright, so today is Thursday, January 24th, 2019, local time is 10.28, temperature is 20 degrees, we are empty here in Westfield, Wisconsin. And guess what? Remember, uh, we were to be, uh, we were to get reloaded in, we were to get loaded in De Pere, Wisconsin at Well Companies tomorrow. Uh, the plan has changed. <clears throat> I am now loading in Marathon Cheese in Marathon, Wisconsin tomorrow at 2 p.m. headed back to I think it was Tyler Texas probably another Walmart load Yeah, uh, right now we are going home, going home, going home, going home. To Tampers and the girls will I belong. All right, we are on our way to the Love Truck Stop in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. 99 miles. I forgot to tell you, um, Brake Bush never did call. I waited all night long. Well, I didn't really wait all night long. What, by the time I got to the truck stop last night, I was tired enough that uh, that I could just go to sleep, and so I did. And anticipating that they were going to call at any time, so I went and. I went and go to sleep, you know, that way uh, I could squeeze in some sleep before they call. And besides, you never know if, when they're going to call. So I went to bed, woke up at about 3 o'clock in the morning, checked my phone, make sure my phone was on, make sure it was not set on private or do not disturb. No phone calls, no missed call, nothing. Not even a text message. And so I went back to sleep. Finally at uh, about nine o'clock, I finally was uh, awake enough to uh, get up and I gave them a call and uh, I said hey how come nobody called oh we forgot about you no just kidding he said hey what time did you call what time did you arrive last night I said about 10 o'clock I said come on in come on in so I I kind of figured they forgot about me last night you know the third shift probably forgot or second shift so <clears throat> I got up gave them a call and 
They told me to go over there and voila, we are empty. All right, coincidentally, we are on Highway 23. This is the beginning of Highway 23. And 23 ends all the way in Sheboygan. So we're gonna take this 23 all the way to Sheboygan for about 90 miles. And then we're gonna merge on uh, Interstate 43 South and go to the Love Truck Stop. This is Lake Emery. This is Pawaukee, Pawaukee County, a Pawaukee Township of Marquette University, uh, Marquette, Wisconsin. <laughs> Marquette University, yeah, all right. When I woke up this morning, it started to snow just a little bit, nothing major. It almost made me say, uh-oh, but nothing happened, so. All right, yesterday's uh, question was, what if, what if? A lot of people missed the point. I don't know how you could possibly miss that point. I I know I don't talk, and I don't make sense sometimes. A lot of you were writing back, says it's hard to believe a Bible that's been written uh, by man. There were a lot of excuses, a lot of reasons why not to believe the Bible. That was not the question. The question was, what if? What if, if every word of the Bible was true? Could you allow yourself to, for a moment, believe that the Bible is true? It was never a question of who wrote the Bible or why the Bible was true or question was can you allow yourself for a moment to believe that the Bible is true and how would you react according to that I already know why some of you came back the way your answers were. I mean, it's from my understanding of what the Bible says, it clearly says why, why you do not believe. But hey, that's your prerogative. So again, for a moment, can you allow yourself to believe the Bible is true and how would you and what would you feel about that again what if what if I'm not the smartest egg or not the smartest egg basket but surely that is pretty clear I mean I don't think anybody can make it clearer than that, right? I'm not a total imbecile.
is the way I've been I've been kind of uh, I've been telling myself throughout you throughout human history the smartest of the smartest the bravest of the bravest of all walks of life with education as high as you know high could be they have been convinced that the Bible is true and here I am or some of us uneducated are convinced that the Bible is not true because it's been written with man or from man written by man uh, it, my question is if the smartest of the smartest could believe according to their intellectual knowledge what do you and I can contribute to debunk that the Bible is not true is that is that a logical argument it's like telling Einstein it's like you and I arguing Einstein about science what impossible way that you and I could contribute to a decent amount of argument that Einstein was wrong then you're probably gonna say well they were just liars and deceivers so you mean to say that every single one of them was a liar or was uh, as a deceiver or I get this a lot of people says well the religion is for the weak I've been the bravest people out in history recorded in the history that will believe Welcome to the town of Montello, Marquette County, squeaky seat. Holy smokies, I didn't realize how squeaky the seat is.
for those of you who asked, who have asked the question on the comment section, who wrote the Bible? God did. God used people to write the Bible. God is a written, inspired written document. For those who are wondering and wants to know, for the skeptics, well, you don't need the answer because I, I already know you're not going to believe. Which is okay. It is okay. No judgment. Let me, let me try to put it this way. A very young student was under tutelage of a certain carpenter. He spent many, many years under a very special or a very, a, a, a certain carpenter. This carpenter has a certain style certain personality of his work um, great carpenter as I said there's there's a certain style unique to the uh, to the teacher and the student is under him for many years as a student of carpentry. When he graduates, this student, more than likely, his style, the personality, his personality and style of this carpenter is gonna show and the students uh, work right because he is inspired by a certain teacher does that make sense if a customer was a big if a customer was knowledgeable about this carpenter and many years later saw the artwork or carpentry work of this student even though this customer never heard of this student being under the tutelage of this carpenter the customer would say you know what this work is kind of influence and inspired by that carpenter he would recognize the work right we are often influenced by certain personality and it shows in our work To my understanding, the way the Bible was written was God inspired people to write the Bible by the Holy Spirit and yet still the, uh, the, the handiwork is inspired by God but the personality of this writer still shows up so it's kind of like the argument who wrote the Bible man or God both because they they are uh, you know one in the same in I don't know how to God inspires to write the Bible through the personality of the writer there you go
I would imagine in every aspect of life, whether you're a carpenter, a writer, a novel writer, or a newscaster, or if you're under someone's, what do you call that? Uh, OGT, what is the word for OGT? The oh boy. You know, when, when uh, apprentice, when you're the apprentice of a certain personality, in later years, when you do your own work, you're the personality of the, your uh, teacher is going to show up in your work. Does that make sense at all? Right back.